Morning Harvest Church. Why don't we just stand so that we can enter the Father's house this morning and it's only through what Jesus did for us that we can enter and we can worship Him this morning. So thank you Jesus that we can gather here this morning in your name. Thank you that we can come before you and worship you and adore you for all that you've done for us. We come before you Jesus this morning is only about you. We've come to adore you, to worship you and to praise you for all that you've done. Help us to lay all aside all our hindrances that we walked in this morning with. Help us to fix our gaze only on you, Jesus. Only on you. Holy Spirit, we say come. Come and have your way and minister to us as we worship Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. See you. 
someone or everyone in this room that's experiencing something. So if you're a businessman and I see you sitting at your desk and I see papers and I see invoices and I see SARS and I see school fees and I just want to let you know that God has got you and we're in the middle of November. People in the congregation I'm sure you're relying on bonuses and for God to come through and show you with these blessings. And as I, as I see that picture, I ask you to renew your minds and take your boss, take your, your management, take your staff and pray for them. Pray for your boss and pray for your family. It's so easy for us to pray for tons of Richard and for all of you. But let's fix our eyes on him and pray for your boss and pray for, your, for his family and pray for that business, pray for the sales. Pray for turnover, because if you're praying for him and if you're carrying him, you will see his hands at work. You will get that bonus. You will get what your family needs in this time. 
So Father, we just release that over this house. Gonna be will be a congregation praying for businesses, praying for businessmen, and seeing God come through for our families. In Jesus' name, amen. My name's Pat Bowler, and I just want to share something with you. Um, for six days, I had huge pain in the backs of my legs. It didn't matter how many pills I took, I'd wake up in the early hours, pop a pill, nothing happened. And then a few weeks ago, we couldn't come to church, and we watched Richard online. And Richard started praying for everybody, for healing. And towards the end of his praying, I put my hand in the air and I said, and my legs, and my legs. That's all I said. 10 minutes later, the pain had completely gone. And, and it hasn't come back. And it's been nearly two weeks now, and it's completely healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, friends, we've got two word of knowledge and then a testimony. If you're in that business space and you need breakthrough, I want to release that over you, like Manesha said. Number two, the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. So if you need healing in your body, on TV, activating her faith and saying, my legs, my legs, and 10 minutes later, healed. Put your hand on your body part, and Tanz has got a word of knowledge for someone's back. Heavenly Father, I thank you that your presence is here to heal. You can just speak out those words. My back, my back, my legs, my legs, my head, my head, my eyes, my eyes. Whatever it is, speak it out, because that's for you. You need breakthrough in business. That word is for you. Receive what he abundantly provided for you at the cross. In Jesus' name. And while you're receiving, let's keep on worshiping.
You're worthy of all our praise and glory this name, this morning. What a beautiful name is the name of Jesus. In your name there is peace, there is freedom, there is joy, there is power in the name of Jesus. I speak this name of Jesus over every situation here this morning. I speak the name of Jesus over every illness. church why don't we just greet someone as we sit down good morning harvest church welcome everybody my name is Brian and this is my wife Lisa. We'd just like to welcome you to church on this Sunday. We would especially like to welcome first time visitors and we would love to bless you with a cappuccino. So please would any first time visitors please raise your hand. We just want to hand out a coffee voucher. We would love it if you would join us just to connect with you after the service. You can meet us at the big table on the deck. We'd love just to, to meet you. Enjoy the rest of the service. Right. Yeah, at Harvest, we'd love to celebrate cheerful givers. There's so much going on in the house, and it's only because of the cheerful givers. Uh, if Marilyn was still here, she would say, if you point your phone at that little zapper thing there, money magically goes out of it, but she's left the building. Um, so we've got a zapper on the screen there, guys. Uh, we've got a bucket at the back, and there's another zapper outside. If we can turn our attention to the announcements on the screen. Hello, and welcome to Harvest Church. Here are this week's announcements. Just a reminder about our bucket drive collection. We Are Durban works with 540 MPOs. The aim is to reach as many children who usually benefit from school feeding schemes during the year so that they can take home food for the holiday. It doesn't cover the whole holiday, but certainly lessens the burden and anxiety. The majority of harvest buckets will go to Lungisani and Ledla Amawati to distribute. The final collection date is the 29th of November. Please contact the information desk for more information regarding the different ways that you can donate. Calling all men for our Tuesday morning meetings here at Harvest from 6.45 to 8 o'clock. At Harvest, we believe in the power of prayer. So we'd like to invite you to join us as we pray on Thursday evenings at 6.15 in the parents' room. If you can't make Thursday evenings, we'll also be praying on Friday mornings at 6.15 in the parents' room. We'll also be praying on Sundays before the first service from 7.30 to 8 o'clock. Oasis will meet this week Thursday at 10 a.m. in the hall. This will be a time for prayer and worship. We hope to see you there. Calling all teenagers to join our exciting year-end dubs function on Friday the 29th of November here at Harvest at 5.30. Ladies and gentlemen, 
You are invited to our Young Life annual event. The Dubs 2024. We're excited to announce that this year's theme is The Great Gatsby. On the 29th of November, 2024. We hope to see you there. We will be having a Christmas carol service on Friday the 13th of December at 6pm. Our Christmas Eve service will be on the 24th of December at 5 o'clock and the same service will be on Christmas Day at 9am. There will be no church service on Sunday the 29th of December or the 5th of January. The first service for 2025 will be on the 12th of January. That's all for this week's announcements. We hope you enjoy the rest of the meeting. morning. Nice to see everybody this morning. Uh, just before I share the word, I just want to do just a little bit of family news for, if you're new, new at Harvest, I just want to um, bring you into speed of a little bit where we where we at as a community. And uh, we did a, a, a Vision Sunday. So if you want to know where, where we are and where we're going for the, for the next while, why don't you go and look at that uh, video on, in our archives. Uh, that'll help you um, understand and know uh, where we're going. And then, um, just from my heart, this building <clears throat> uh, is super echoey and loud and all of those kind of things. So if you whisper to your wife at the back, I can hear you, just to let you know that. I know who's agreeing with the messages and who's not. No, but what I'm saying, so if, if you're here and you're new and you haven't been shown where the babies' facilities are, or the children's facilities. Um, they are outside, we've got a baby's mom's room just over there where that um, glass mirror is there, and the baby's rooms are outside. So if your child does have a moment, and uh, it gets loud, and I was a parent of five kids, so I know this, I don't hear my children when they make noise when they were that young, but everybody else heard. So, so if, if you're having a moment, you're having a cough fit, or a laughing fit, or something that's happening, then yeah, you can just make your way out the doors, um, that, that'll be really helpful. You know, we have to reason from the whole to the part, and uh, just because the building's acoustic's pretty bad, so that'll be super helpful uh, for us if you, if you are, you yourself having a moment, or if, you're, if your children are having a little moment. Is that okay? Is that good? Just from my heart to your heart. Second thing that I do want to share is... Um, Concerning our vision of where we're going, there's certain things that we are doing, there's certain things that us as Harvest we're not going to do. Uh, a couple of those things is we're not going to argue or fight about politics. We're not going to do that, we're not going to polarize, we're not going to do that. It's a healthy culture that we've got here, we don't want anybody to polarize in any way, shape or form. The other thing that I do want to mention is because it often comes to me on what my stand on, on Israel and the Gaza and the war is, my, my stand is that Jesus came for the whole world. And I'm not going to allow us to polarize or to, to, to isolate each other, and we're not going to have arguments, we're not going to have fights about it. Um, the, the beautiful thing about Durban, there are churches that really do go after that. So if you do want to go after that, man, there's, that church might be for you. I, I don't want anybody to leave, but I don't want us to be in a position where we're taking our eye of what God wants us to, to, to look at. You know, the, the Bible promises, Jesus promises there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. You know, I've got friends in, in, in Palestine. I've got friends in, in, in Israel. So it's, it's, it's where, do, where do I put my flag? You know, my flag is Jesus. And I just want to read us a scripture of what my stance is concerning all of these things. Is that okay? So 1 Corinthians 1.30 and it says, and because of him, speaking of the Father, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. And I, and I'll take this, when I come to you, brothers and sisters, I do not come proclaiming 
to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Christ Jesus and him crucified. That's what we're building. That's where we're going. There's two people, groups on the planet. One is unsaved and the other one is saved. Two people groups on this planet. One is in Adam and the other one is in Christ. We have to center our whole mindset around that. And why are certain people doing certain things? And all of those, we have to understand that in Christ, we don't go after those things. We don't want to declare the murder of nations and to other people. So wherever you're settling yourself, you have to find Jesus. Where would Jesus be? Okay? So if we could do that, let's just, man, I want to know nothing except Christ and Him crucified um, for us and for you so that you don't get yourself caught up in a whole debate of where and what and all those kind of things. Go read your Bible. It's super clear. Go and start in Matthew 24, and you can see the whole shape of what that's going to look like. It's going to happen. Jesus prophesied that it's going to happen. Who are you going to be in the midst? Because if we can't take... What, what Paul encouraged Timothy, and he said, the goal of my command, our goal of our command is to love with a sincere heart, faith. Sincere. So that's our responsibility. Okay. And, and, and to posture our hearts like that. I am for what Jesus died for. And that's the nations of the world. Amen? Is that okay? It's, I'm not favoring one over the other. Definitely not doing that. So if you can hear the heart, because we, we, I don't want to sing one tune. It's like, let it, let it be what Paul said. Let it be, hey, I, I want this to be known among us, that we are centered around Christ and Him crucified. Gerda, so beautiful having you. So beautiful. How's your week been? Okay. Yeah, and, and Al, man. <coughs> He's having a ball with Jesus. He's having a ball. You got a just a beautiful marriage, and uh, and Al went to be with the Lord last week, and we did his life celebration. So a real privilege and a real honour. Okay, is that okay? Get over the family news. It does say that I present this with fear and trembling. Yeah, it's just sometimes we. I don't get to see all of you in the week, so I, I just get to do those sometimes on the weekend. Is that okay? Is that fine? Hey, bus, is that cool? Okay. All right, we can put those slides up. I'm going to pray. Is that okay, babe? Good. Leaders, all good? Happy? Happy? Okay, cool. All right, let's pray together. So, Heavenly Father, thank you for your deep and extravagant love for us. I thank you, Jesus, that uh, you, you came and you did a marvelous work sent by Father to then reconcile this bunch of people back to yourself, not counting our sins against us. And Holy Spirit, I thank you today. We're going to learn that um, you've marked us, you've sealed us uh, as a guarantee of our future and our inheritance. So I thank you, Father, for your word. I thank you that you help me. I thank you that your word penetrate and, and divide between spirit and soul and joint and marrow and let it work between the thoughts and the intentions of our own hearts. So I thank you. We honor your word. We honor your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we are still in Ephesians 1. And... Um, I trust that it has been helpful to you and, uh, and for your life as you read and you, 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 you're grasping the Word of God in a, in a significant way for you, for you personally, and, uh, and then for the family that you, that you live with and the people around you and your work scenario. So this is what we're going to deal with today. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession. 
to the praise of His glory. And you were included. You were included when you heard this message of the truth. When you hear the message of the truth and you feel excluded, you're not hearing the truth. If you feel your heart moving towards this place of being included, you're hearing the truth. The gospel of your salvation. But there it is. You have to cross the line. It says, and when you believed, when you stepped in, the Holy Spirit comes in you. He regenerates you. He renews you. He changes you. And then he puts a seal or a marker on you as a guarantee of what is still to come. It is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession. You are God's possession. And he's put a seal in you to guarantee that. Marked with a seal. The promise of the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22, it says, And it is God who establishes us with you in Christ, and he has anointed us. Say, we anointed. Amen. Say, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. And who has also put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. And then when we eventually get to Ephesians 4, you'll see it says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So there's two things with the Holy Spirit as we engage with Him. Number one, you can grieve the Holy Spirit. And number two, you can quench the Holy Spirit. Now you quench the Holy Spirit when the anointing, authority, and power of God that is in you wants to come out to bring ministry or to bring change, and we stop it. It's you quenching what God wants to do. You grieve the Holy Spirit when you are no longer, when you're not recognizing the truth of who God has made you to be, and you're choosing the opinions of others or the opinions of self. It grieves the Holy Spirit because He made you to be something. And this is what we're going to this is what we're going to unpack today. We don't want to grieve him. You want to believe the truth about who God says you are. You want to believe the truth about who God made you to be. And when you understand that, you will no longer quench. Because the, your spirit man is consistently wanting to give out. The, what is the seal? The seal is a stamp with a private mark, it's like a signet ring. It's back in the olden days, they used to get wax and they used to close a letter that nobody could open it until the recognized person that broke the seal could open it. It was sealed for your protection. Holy Spirit, the promised Holy Spirit marks you with a seal. It's for your protection. Uh, back in the day, a negative side to this is people used to get marked or branded by a seal by an owner. You were marked forever with that on you. The positive is the believers were sealed by the Holy Spirit that guarantees our inheritance. So it's like Jesus' tomb. No one could get in, but he could get out. And this is what we're going to discover today. That you're a spirit, you're a soul, and you're a body. And the Holy Spirit came and he marked you with a seal. And that seal around your spirit is impenetrable. Before you came to Christ, you had a corruptible spirit, soul, and body. Now that you come into Christ, your spirit man has been made perfect, but your soul and your body are on a journey. But as believers, we've got truth that we can navigate our mind, will, emotions, and the lusts of the flesh towards truth of who you really are now. And this is the magnificent work of what God did in Christ. Jesus got out. You see, the anointing in you, the authority in you, in your spirit, the power in your spirit, man, wants out. But nothing from the outside can penetrate that. 
Where are you getting oppressed? Where are you getting influenced? You're getting influenced in your soul realm. You're getting influenced in your body. Where do the lies come? The lies come in your mind, your will, your emotions. The lies come when your body is not lining up with truth. And who speaks louder than who? If you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling out of sorts with the truth of God, you've got no peace in you, what's speaking? The anxiety is speaking really loudly. If you're sick, what is speaking louder? Your, your body is speaking to you. As believers, we have to recognize what God did in Christ that regenerates you. This process starts with redemption. He redeems us, and redemption has two parts to it. Number one, we have to be redeemed from the law. And let me go to that. We have to be redeemed from the law, and then you are sealed and held for redemption. Your glorified body is held for redemption at the end. Then you are reconciled. You reconciled to God where God was in Christ reconciling you back to himself, not counting your sins against you. When you believe that, you enter into the realm of regeneration where the Bible says that you are changed, completely changed. You are not old being made new. You are new. The old has gone. The new has come. Redemption. We redeemed and will be redeemed. Our glorified bodies have been purchased through the sacrificial payment of Jesus, but they are not yet redeemed. Redemption is salvation complete at the end. Salvation begins with a born-again experience, but it will not be our complete until we receive our glorified bodies and assume our position in eternity with Christ. Paul was saying that until we see these bodies glorified, the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit is our guarantee that the rest of our salvation is secure and coming. The first redemption, and let me read it. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, Galatians 3.13, by becoming a curse for us. Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree so that Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham, if you understand what the blessing of Abraham was, God credited Abraham with righteousness. So it's talking about the gift of righteousness, that in Christ, the blessing of Abraham, righteousness by faith, can come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promised Holy Spirit by faith. The Holy Spirit's not going to come and live and abide and have His home where there is a nature that has been opposed to God. Your nature had to be changed for the Spirit of God to come and make His resting place in you. You are new. But your stinking thinking ain't. So we're on a progressive journey of understanding truth. But when we understand this truth, then our mind, will, and emotions no longer have to govern our lives because we've got truth to step into that you're perfect. Your body that we've got truth to step into and we renew our minds. We renew our minds. This is the process of this beautiful thing called walking with God. This over here, we either stopping the very will of God flowing from us through our spirits by the Holy Spirit, we stop that by our choice and our will, by emotional will. I don't feel like it today, I'm sick today, I'm scared. All of those things that we we governed in that world, we have to no longer allow that to be the governing reality over our lives. We have to get Righteousness by faith, a perfect spirit, he has perfected forever those by one sacrifice. You with me? This first redemption is so powerful. Do you know that? For you to be redeemed, the payment had to be of equal value to you. 
the equal value to you was Christ. Did you get that? <laughs> Redemption, the ransom or the payment for you to be redeemed, had to be of equal value to you. You can no longer think of yourself as worthless. You can no longer think of yourself as a sinner. If you believe you're a sinner, you need to be born again. You have to think of yourself as the righteous. You see, we've been sin conscious for so long. We have to become righteous conscious. Because that's the only truth that you've got to rely upon. Imagine we believe our emotions and our minds and the things that are going on in our head. Some of you do. <laughs> and, and, and in that place, there's cyclical patterns. You can't think of yourself as unworthy. Because the payment was of equal value to you. I, I, I don't know, I feel really loved when I hear that. I feel deeply loved by the grace of God. That he would pay of equal value to me. When I was in my most worthless state, God said the equal payment for your life is Christ. We can no longer see ourselves any other way than God sees us. That grieves the Holy Spirit. But we're learning and we're transitioning our lives and we're hearing truth and we're governing our lives now by the true truth of the gospel. The Holy Spirit in the lives of us believers is the pledge, the guarantee, the promise, the assurance that we shall enter into our inheritance with all its benefits. What is regeneration? Why don't you put that scripture up for me, please? Titus 3, verse 3. Where to, where to be redeemed. You had to be reconciled. And when you were like, yes, yes, huh, yes, please, Lord, Boof. when you believed, Regeneration takes place. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hating, hated by others and hating one another. That over there, if you are born again, believer, and you're still living there, you're living out of the soulish realm, trying to figure this thing out. You haven't discovered that you knew. And then it says, but when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy by the washing of regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior. So that being justified or being made right with God, by His grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. You see, at salvation, we each received a brand new spirit. Brand new. You might think to yourself, yes, but I'm still sinning, so therefore I've still got that nature. No, if you're born again, you no longer have the nature. You are willfully participating. And guys, you know, let's get honest. The sins you're doing is the ones you like. Because the Bible says sin is pleasurable for a season. But it also says the wages of sin is death. Oh, I don't like to. No, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do it if you didn't like it. You have to get honest with this process. But you see, we can get honest with the process because now I've got... I've got something that governs my life called a brand new spirit. You see, this smuggles with our cups all the time. It's because we, we're doing life through our behavior, 
I can't be, I can't be, I can't be. You have to start agreeing with the Word of God. You have to start agreeing with the work of Christ. You have to start agreeing with what the Holy Spirit has done in you. You're a brand new spirit. It's free from sin and totally pure. There's a seal. Your spirit man has been sealed. It's not penetrated. What's penetrating? Your soul realm and your body. When we immediately sealed, when you believe by the Holy Spirit, it's like a vacuum sealing for preservation. It's like canned food. Preservation. It's a barrier is formed to keep sin out and retain the purity of our born again spirits. What did you do to become righteous? You believed. So if you couldn't change your nature by what you did, why do you think now you can change your nature back by what you do? You didn't do it. It was given to you as a gift. But that's where the enemy gets in. Buffy lies to you. You're not a Christian. How can you be? And the accusation comes. The accuser of the brethren no longer accuses you to the Father because heaven has been purged by His blood. But He accuses you to you. And then there's some helpful people out there that will accuse you too. Your born again spirit doesn't participate. <laughs> Man, I feel like I can labor. Your righteous nature is as righteous as Christ's. That's why the Holy Spirit marks you with a seal to protect the purity. And what it, cry, uh, what it cost him to make you like that. We have to govern our lives. Before you were saved, you had to, the law revealed Christ. You couldn't do the law on your own. So you choose Christ as your Savior. And then he gives you an inheritance by making you a, an heir and a co-heir with himself. That's grace. But very Christians, very few Christians know who they are in the Spirit. You see, friends, I, I think this is why I can deal with people caught up in cyclical behavior. And I can deal with anything because I understand the work of Christ. I've seen addictions fall. I've seen freedom come. I've got it written here. John says in 2 John, May it go well with you and may you be in good health as your soul prospers. When your soul is in line with who you are, prosperity is experienced. In your spirit is fullness is everything that you need. Your spirit man doesn't grow. But we grow in the knowledge of the truth. The rest of Ephesians, when Paul is praying, he says, I look at the faith that you have for all the saints and love, and, he says, and now I pray. And he prays that the spirit of wisdom and revelation may 
reveal some things to you. But you know where, where wisdom and revelation grows? The Bible says in the knowledge of Him. Revelation is not something new. Revelation to you is something that you, that you have seen for the first time. That's what revelation is. Revelation in the cross is now being revealed to you so you can walk differently. And revelation to you is now unfolding. That's why I want more and more revelation. But the revelation is I don't have anything new. I've got something that is true and I'm living from it. Two Corinthians five seventeen. If any man be in Christ, is a new creation. The oldest passed away. Behold, all things are new. You see, now we can build, and you can hear the scripture over and over and over again. But it means something different because you've been completely changed. And I know where your mind is. I know the things that you're choosing. But it doesn't make you now. Unperfect. Please go and study Romans 6. In Romans 6, it says, Your old man, that's not your father. <laughs> your old man, your old sinful man, has been crucified with Christ. You have been united with Christ in his crucifixion, in his death, in his burial, and you have been united with Christ in newness of life, in resurrection life. He did not unite you with himself in newness of life and leave a little bit of old nature. It got crucified with Christ. It no longer, see, it ceased to exist. It only exists in your habits and your mindsets and your choices. It's like a computer in the sense that they can be programmed. And once programmed, they'll continue to function as programmed until we reprogram. Where does a reprogramming happen? Yeah. We were all born in sin and our old nature programmed our minds to be selfish, bitter, angry, lust, etc. When we are born again, we become totally new in our spirits. This old nature has been completely changed. It's not in the process of becoming new. It's already as pure and perfect as Jesus. Paul called this the resurrection life. Our sin nature is dead and gone, but it left behind the body. And inside of you have got old habits. And the Bible says that sin wages war against your members. And in Romans 6 it says, now no longer offer your members as an opportunity to unrighteousness. Your eyes, your ears, no matter what, don't allow sin to use your body to play its symphony. It will still function as programmed until we reprogram it. So what about sin? Who causes sin? Who makes you do all of these things? James helps us. James 1.13, let no one say when he is tempted, I'm being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted, scrutinized, or be tested with evil, and he himself tempts, scrutinizes, and tests no one. But look here, there's a little bit of personal responsibility. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. <gasps> the devil made me do it. No, he didn't. <laughs> My friend made me do it. No, he didn't. You were lured and enticed by your own desire. Then desire, when it's conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's fully grown, brings forth to death. Oh, God is against me. He's hurting me. He's punishing me. No, He's not. It's you. 
It's your fault. And I can say that with a smile on my face because I'm with you. Do, don't be deceived, my beloved brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of His own will, He brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of His cre creatures, of His new creatures creatures of his new creation <sighs> and I've got teenagers my boys and I know what happens in a teenage body us hormones <laughs> are wild but where does self control come from it's a fruit of the spirit that is connected to your spirit that wants to give birth to life from your spirit. You see, everything in your spirit wants out because it changes the world. Things can't penetrate it, but it wants out. The anointing wants out. Authority wants out. Power wants out. But it has to get past your mind, will, emotions. As believers, where oppression is, is in the soul realm. Before Christ, people are possessed. It says that. Go and look at Ephesians 2, verses 2. But in Christ, you're different. You're diff Aren't you, doesn't it do something in your heart to go, hey, you know what, I don't have to stay in the cyclical pattern anymore. I don't have to stay in these mindsets. I don't have to stay with these things. Yes, and friends, you, you see, you ha if you don't personalize it, then the people around you are going to consistently influence you. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers from truth to renew your mind. In the next five minutes, the importance of the Spirit of God in you. John 3, 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. That's why you need to be born again. John 4, 23. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. You see how easy it is now to worship because now it's a natural response to who you are. Your spirit is longing to worship. It's governed to worship. We choose in worship at home or here to do this. But your spirit wants out. It wants to worship. It wants to glorify. And when you hear, like, let's worship people. Ah, it's your choice, your will, your soul realm. Ah, give. Oh, I was telling me about money always in the church. Your, your spirit man is generous. It's generous. It's a natural response. When you get this gospel, you become radically generous. But when you get told, if you, give, if you don't give, this is not going to happen. No, no, come on, friends. The reality is you release generosity upon your, your, your own life when you respond to the Spirit of God in you. Who is teaching and speaking to your spirit all the time. But our excuses and our indoctrination and all these kind of things. Are, no, I'm not doing that. When it says, husbands, love your wives because it's a natural response to love your wife. Wives, submit to your husband. Respect him. Why? Because it's, that's inside of you. Ephesians 4. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Spirit of your mind. And then you're going to see that you are created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Oh, yes, because that's, that's who you are. We're in this process of discovering. Yeah. Friends, if we get this, I'm telling you, we, we, we change things. We change everything around us because 
the kingdom of God within you is being poured out. I love Paul. He would have been a lot more aggro with us, I promise you, because he would, I'm starting to get radically passionate about this. Paul, he's like, come on, guys. Man, the, the glory of you believing the truth. The glory that it brings God when you believe that his work was sufficient to change you. He changed me. He can change anybody. John 4, 24, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. It becomes easy now. It no longer becomes as like, how do we preach that thing? True worshipers must be as... No, here we go. It becomes effortless now. Yeah, John 6. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. <laughs> oh, the words that I've spoken to you, Jesus, saying are spirit and life. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. But he who joy, is joined to the Lord becomes one with him in spirit. Romans 8, 16. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we're the children of God. 1 Corinthians 1, 12. It says, we... What we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit, explaining spiritual realities with spirit-taught words. The person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they, these truths are discerned only through the spirit. But the Holy Spirit speaking to your spirit all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time, and then he, then he gives us a, 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 the ability to, 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 to govern that, and, and he says, pray in the Spirit, man. It, it, it helps you. It, it builds up your most perfect faith. John 14, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him or knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Now, that was pre him going to heaven. Now, it's for you. He's in you. Just say amen. amen. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, and the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I've said to you. 1526, but when the helper comes, whom I will send from the Father, the Spirit of truth, poof, and then he seals you, who proceeds from the Father, for he will be a bear witness about me. When the spirit of truth comes, John 16, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are still to come. And you were also included in Christ when you heard the message of the truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal. The promised Holy Spirit becomes the protection over your life. Who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of His glory. Let's stand together.